What's up, everybody? Jensen Cummings here. Thank you for tuning in. Exciting. We got Angela Dugan back on the show again. Thanks, Angela, for taking some time. Love it. So, so thrilled to be talking about this. Yes. So we got to talk a little bit uh, about tequila, love, and bartending, love. But now we're going to talk about something that is very much your mission now, kind of within interweaving into the industry a little bit. And we're going to get into that. So talk about Dugan and Dame. What exactly is that? Dugan and Dame. It's a line of uh, cocktail mixers, tonics, bitters, and soon-to-be syrups that's all botanically driven, organic, wild-crafted, Good for the soul, good for the body, good as medicine. Okay. Botanicals. What does that mean? Plants. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and wild crafted is another one of those terms. There you go. That always reminds me. Quit saying that. Yeah. Um, what is what is wild crafted mean? Sure. So wild crafted means that there are actual specialists who go out into nature to harvest. Um, and they're making sure that the, the sources that we purchase all of our, our plant matter from comes from places that are not from from harvesters that do not over harvest. So they're very conscious of the environment as well. Understood. Yes, there's a lot of jargon within this. This is part of, we're gonna create a lexicon <laughs> for the hospitality industry to be like, these words that sound like they're, they're hippie healthy words are actually practical and smart. And you're like, oh wait, foraging. I love my mushroom, dude. I could totally yeah. be able to guy who goes and is out there picking different herbs and weeds and things like that. So I wanna set the tone for people. All right, take us back. We mentioned the bartending. You're in Boca Raton, Florida. You yep. have restaurants as well. So, but take us back even further. Where did you originally get into the restaurant industry? I was 23 moving to Las Vegas and wanted to be a bartender. Why not? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so that's how it started. I got inundated into the industry. Not originally what I was doing. I was getting my master's in uh, public speaking at the time, uh, but just fell in love with it. It's either this industry, you either love it or you don't, and there's no middle ground. So I started managing from there, left Vegas, uh, moved to Florida. My husband actually hired me as a corporate trainer for a chain of pizza franchises. And then um, as we like to say, the rest is history. Him and I, uh, with some partners, opened a couple of concepts and are continuing to put things on the horizon. But with my background in bartending, I just took over the cocktail program side of things, the HR side of things, and um, realized I wanted something more. I was also an instructional designer at time. I had like a whole history of of crazy jobs, but I was an instructional designer. So I was really into education and training. I ended up working for this uh, medical company, did not agree with a lot of the uh, nutrition advice that they were telling people. I knew there was something more to it. And so got my master's in holistic nutrition, started studying herbalism, um, was creating these cocktail programs, realized that in the cocktail world, there still is a huge gap with healthy ingredients. So I started creating all of the mixers for these programs that I was I was um, developing and then it turned into a side hustle which is now one of our businesses I, I absolutely love it and I think it's very thoughtful because when you're on the bar side you know it's easy to be like in Vegas and everywhere it's like your job is to get people fucked up and it's yeah. like well wait a minute there's there's another opportunity for the way that we go about that so I think that's fascinating instructional designer what does that mean? Sorry, again, the, the words. Um, good thing my husband's not here right now. He'd be calling me out. Um, instructional designer is I just, I wrote training programs. So I basically taught trainers how to train, whether it was like retail industry, medical industry. I just, I wrote training curriculum. Understood. Okay. So, and your restaurants, I'm interested in this because you have two restaurants, Kapow, right? Mm -hmm. I want to just tell people, we don't have to get into exactly all about the concept, but I'm interested in you're in it right now. You have these concepts and you're finding a way to bring botanicals into that. How is that working from a practical application standpoint, like behind the bar? So I, I've always loved developing the, these programs and I try to follow trends and, and I just use my gut because I think our gut tells us more than anything out there can. And yeah. I've always, unfortunately, fortunately, I've always been two to three years ahead of the trend. I was doing low impact cocktails seven, eight years ago yeah. um, and tiki cocktails five years ago. So uh, being that my passion is in this herbal world and plant medicine, I, I decided this, this is going to be the next thing. And I see it slowly kind of popping up with uh, using, I, I mean, liquor comes from a plant. That's where it all starts. 
And uh, essentially, cocktails were created as medicine if you really yeah. dive into the history of them. So just bringing it back full circle, there's an herbalist, a really famous herbalist named Guido Masse, and he is from, he's Italian. And he create, he basically wrote the book on bitters, literally. Yeah. And I remember listening to him a couple of years ago talk about how uh, the cocktail world is going to be America's uh, gateway into plant medicine. And I was just like, whoa, that's brilliant. And I know how to do this. So I just started running with it. So the cocktail menu at Kapow is very, like every cocktail on there actually has a, a medicine standpoint to it, although we make no claims whatsoever. Course, um, yeah. but we combine the plants that are all heal in the same like area of the body. Oh, I like that a lot. I'm super interested in that because this whole channel, Best Served High, right? Hospitality Industry Good Health was all about we have to make balance, not just like healthy because it's scary sometimes to jump all the way in the deep end, but finding balance for yourself to make it cool. Like it has to be something that is enticing that creates attention. And so talk about, you know, I'm sure you've had bartenders or guests or industry pros who come in after work who like don't quite get it. Think it's a little like outside of their normal in the industry. Talk about those conversations because I'm sure you've been able to convert people. Yeah, well, I, I try not to use big language on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> And I let other people help describe. So we either describe by flavor profiles. We'll still sit, like list the plants that are um, in the actual individual cocktails. But we try to describe by flavor profiles. Fortunately, I would say the majority of people are inquisitive, especially if they're into craft cocktails. We're opening a restaurant behind us. So you see everybody walking it. behind. It's action. Um, oh, I want to like grab them. Like, hey, come yeah. talk to us. <laughs> I know, really. They probably would. Um, so, but it's... I, I geek out on this stuff so I can talk about all the plants. It's training those other bartenders to be as passionate about it as I am too. And fortunately we've instilled that culture in our restaurant. So we've been able to, um, but people I think for the most part are pretty curious. You know, you already have the people who are looking at calorie content, looking at low right. sugar, you know, so it's, it's like, Hey, but what about this? This is another way that these plants actually can heal. And it's a way to introduce yourself to, like those, sorry, those plants in the cocktail oh, yeah. world. It's real life. So have you seen the opportunity for, you know, zero proof cocktails and some of those type of things? Have you been able to put it on a pedestal in a way that you never had been able to, to before from a brand and menu design perspective? Yeah, 100%. So on our menu, we actually have a category called shock tells. So <laughs> they're all, they're mocktails. So there's no alcohol in them. There's seven of them. They're aligned with the chakra, the energy fields of the body. <laughs> so each one yeah. is a specific root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, crown, all of that fun stuff. Um, the, the ingredients that are used actually are aligned with those energy fields. So for instance, the root shocktail is all about grounding with the earth. So we actually use beet, which is grown under the earth as yeah. our primary ingredient in that cocktail um and it's an awesome conversation piece plus they're beautiful so all of the chakras have different colors that are associated with them and we were able right. to match that in our cocktails as well so the cocktails are colored the same way using natural ingredients of course um are colored the same way that the chakras are but i think very lucky i've been for a while people to kind of not but um I just, I really is that trend toward people wanting something different. And especially during this time, polarizing. It's either what I found this is very oversimplified general is people are either going off the deep end, coming home with three handles of vodka you know, every weekend, or they're realizing, hey, I need to do something about my health. This is a, a good time for introspection since they've been at home. So, I Industry's think, changing. I, I, I completely agree. I think about how so much in this moment we've talked about in technology or in the way that we shop or all these things where we've accelerated certain trends forward five years or forward three years, the, these ideas. And I wonder what that means for the hospitality industry. Some of it has been, I don't know, there's been negative connotations. Like now all of a sudden it's going to be all about delivery food and our on-premise, you know, our 
four walls are not going to be as important anymore. And some of that, there's a little bit of trepidation. I'm fascinated in this trend, <laughs> right? This trend yeah. and how we've accelerated forward potentially. Give me a couple of your thoughts. Uh, how do we mainstream this when we don't have somebody like yourself who clearly is a luminary in the space and we want to see somebody who's just the bartender in Vegas or in Omaha or anywhere else where they may not have this deep-seated culture that's built? Give me some thoughts on how we mainstream this. Okay, sorry, I missed the, the first part of that question. Um, you, you're about this, this kind of the style of, of cocktail and health. How do we mainstream yeah, I'm that? Thinking about how we kind of how we mainstream the idea of botanicals, this type of co thinking about cocktails, thinking about health, thinking about the way that we connect what we put into our bodies with the effect that it has on our bodies. Yeah. Um, fortunately, like I said, I think that trend is already there. I think a lot of people are starting to look at information is so accessible, health is so accessible the CrossFit community that started 11 years ago, I think they really kind of helped push that fitness community a little bit. Um, it's it, the herbal world in America is finally, since this is really started grounding in the seventies, but is finally starting to grow. I think there's just that natural curiosity and that natural forward movement. Um, and fortunately there are more companies like mine that are really paying attention to the ingredients that are in their products. The consumers are so much smarter than they used to be. They're questioning these ingredients. Information has to be accessible. Um, people, because everybody can talk and because of this, this digital age that we're in right now, it's, it's, uh, you have to be transparent on what you're using in your product. And I think it's, it's, we're already there. The consumers are already demanding a little bit more. They may not know but you have entrepreneurs out there who are trying uh, to stay ahead of those trends and they see like the consumers looking for healthier alternatives. So then they start educating themselves, you know, but it's, it really is a ground roots effort in this, in this realm of the cocktail world. Yeah. Gra grassroots has a whole different meaning right now when you're talking about the botanicals. I really like how you started talking about this and all of a sudden the lights behind you and there's like a halo around. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like trying to- I know, I know. Don't, no, 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 no. Like... The sound is good and you're glowing. It's totally perfect. It's it's very on brand for you. I'm sure you planned that. Totally. I totally told planned the so, to come through at a certain time. <laughs> yes, let's talk about the exact products for these last couple minutes. The products themselves, where can they get them? like what what are what are they what exactly are they going to be purchasing consuming like what is that absolutely look like? absolutely so um dugan and dame dugan and dame uh right now we only have distribution in south florida we just okay. officially launched last year so we're looking for more national distribution um and we we just have ton a tonics and bitters line so bitters are basically the salt and pepper to a cocktail bitters originally were created as medicine to help with digestion so the way that I create the bitters is, <clears throat> excuse me, I extract each plant in different groups of alcohol for different amounts of time and then blend them <clears throat> so that it actually pulls out the medicine of that plant because extraction is a way to pull out that medicine. I don't claim that they have medicinal properties, but I try to honor that folk method as much as possible so that what you are consuming is what has been around as medicine for centuries. And then uh, for the tonics, because tonic was a, a way to um, treat malaria, and I use I, tonic traditionally. You use the the, the uh, bark of the cinchona tree. I don't use that bark. I actually use a different bark because there's concern that that cinchona bark is being over harvested. Um, but I use something else that treats malaria. And then I I do what's called decoction. It's another folk method of extracting the medicine. So taking all the plant matter, letting it simmer for 20 minutes and then just adding citric acid as the, the stabilizer and sugar, so it's a syrup, and then you add the soda water and your, your alcohol to it. But what's awesome is these can be consumed as non-alcoholics. It doesn't have to be a tonic for um, gin or tequila. It can just be a tonic for an NA consumption. And we have three flavors of tonics. We have the classic, which is very citrus board, and then there's um, a five spice, paying homage to on our, our Asian cuisine. And then we also have the smoking flowers. And so I use Lapsang Sujong, which is a smoked black tea um, to get that smoke flavor in there. 
Oh, that's awesome. All right, people, we need to find distribution so yeah. that we can get Dugan and Dane products all over for sure. I think it's important. I just, I love, I love the entrepreneurial hustle. I love connecting the dots between different passions that may seem divergent, but very much uh, I think are congruent. And you've clearly done a good job of figuring that piece out. And I know the answer, but are they fucking delicious, Angela? Oh, they're amazing. They're amazing. Oh, yeah. Listen, I hand zest all of the citrus that goes into the tonics, and you can taste that love. There is no question. <laughs> That's it. They're delicious. That's the thing is we're recognizing more and more that the narrow focus that we had of thinking about cocktails, thinking about beverages, thinking about food was pretty shallow, and there's so many more ingredients. There's so much more depth to it, and I think of you know places like Noma where all of a sudden they're pulling weeds out of the ground and thinking about that. Yeah. You know, wild foraging, stuff that's happening on the wild crafting side. All of a sudden, these things that used to get, you know, like round out or whatever that, you know, spray is that kills everything. Some of those things are actually delicious, I think, is a fascinating opportunity. So, Angela, I appreciate it. And thank you for taking some time right now, because I know you're trying to open back up uh, <laughs> restaurants. No big deal. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me. I love to talk about this stuff. So the more that I can share, it's it's just it, it's my my heart and soul. I, I think it's great. And I think it's important work. And I think the industry is going to get really behind this. So keep going. And the fact that you got the public speaking background now, I, I see a lot of opportunity people are <laughs> yeah. calling on you a lot to speak on the behalf of what happens next in this realm. So thank you for taking some time. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Awesome. Great to chat. Yes, this is happening. And it's interesting. It's already happened just more and more operators, more and more bartenders, more and more chefs are going to kind of find the fact that this is already happening and needs to happen. I think it's really great. So even in the consumption of beverages, the consumption of alcohol, there can still be a balance. This is the major theme of this show, best served high, hospitality, industry, good health. I wanted to take that word that I've been getting high way too much my entire life and thought it was the way that I was supposed to operate because we work hard, we play hard, this is who we are in the industry. And I recognized that I couldn't sustain and a lot of us could not sustain that level of abuse to our bodies, to our minds, to our emotions, to our relationships. And so finding a way to within the industry, find balance, I'm all in. I think it's amazing stuff. That's what this channel's for. That's why I am so happy to be able to share stories, to have conversations and clearly, Angela is all about it, and the energy is infectious for sure. All right, everyone, appreciate you all. Have a